Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, everyone. This is the Red Cap Sales Coaching Chalk Talk. My name is Hugh Little, and I am the head sales wizard at Red Cap Sales Coaching. I'm broadcasting tonight from beautiful Old Town Sebring, the very best part of Central Florida. And I have my co-host, Jim Hamlin, the co-host with the most, the Lubbock Lion, in the studio with us tonight. Jim, what in the world is going on in West Texas? Everything's going on in West Texas. The weather's nice and hot, and uh, it's beautiful. And I'm actually in in Amarillo tonight. So, uh, well, all righty. Amarillo, Texas, and yeah, they've got you all over West Texas out there, don't they? All over West Texas and New Mexico, and now I've even got parts of Oklahoma. So uh, I'm getting all over. Man, I'll tell you what, that's the biggest thing since the Louisiana Purchase, just almost. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is week 98 of our Chalk Talk radio program. Uh, Jim, did you know that 1098 code in police code means that the assignment is completed? And. and not only that, but last last week, remember we talked about Berkelium, and I was wondering if that had anything to do with Berkeley? Yeah. <laughs> well, tonight, 98 is the atomic number, believe it or not. I swear this is true, Jim. I'm not making this up. 98 is the atomic number of Californium. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's also a, an actinide, which I have no idea what that is, and I have no idea what Californium is. It probably has something to do with marijuana, would be my guess, but I am just not <laughs> sure about that. So tonight on Chalk Talk 98 with our guest Lisa Malice, we're going to talk about how to finish up all of our important tasks on time and be organized and be relaxed so we can say 1098, the assignment is completed. And, uh, Jim, I, I'm pretty sure it even works in California. So uh, all right. <laughs> that will be all right. Well, every week we do talk about sales and marketing and business and success, and we interview a different guest. Last week we talked with leadership creativity expert Tony Vengrove. Now, if you missed that show or if you missed any of the other 95 shows or if you just want to revisit some of your favorite shows, you can listen to them in the archives at bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y, slash sales chalk talk. And uh, the S in sales, the C in chalk, and the T in talk have to be capitalized to get to the right place. Well, tonight our special guest is my very own task management and organization coach, Lisa Malice. And upcoming guests include branding expert David Tyerman and a return visit with our good friend Pam Herman. And Pam just had a brand new book released, and we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to have business coach Mark McWinney on, and our good buddy, Mr. Positivity, Michael Shook, is going to be back for uh, another session. And uh, we're going to be talking with business consultant LaDonna Kelly. So we have got some great stuff coming up uh, for you. But tonight, we are just honored to have time strategy visionary Lisa Malice with us. Lisa is my very own time management and organization coach. And I'll tell you, Jim, she has given me such excellent plans and strategies to organize my time and start doing the things that I should be doing and stop doing the things that I shouldn't be doing. I I hardly recognize myself. And uh, she's really made it possible, she's helped make it possible for me to create more and be more profitable and spend less time doing it. And that's a pretty darn cool combination of things right there. So I invited her to be on the show because I wanted to share Lisa with all of our listeners. Now, a couple of things about Lisa. Jim, um, 
she's she lives up in Ohio, and so that's right. She is a Yankee girl, and um, you know I just I just want you to know, folks, though that that on this show uh, we uh, we consider Yankees to be true Americans, and uh, we're just we're just more than willing to talk to them and learn from them because they're really pretty good people. So uh, uh, we're excited about having Lisa on the show tonight. Now she loves chocolate. And she also loves working with clients who are passionate about their goals and dedicated to working smart to achieve those goals. Uh, Here's one of the reasons I love Lisa, because she loves country music. And I love country music, too. Uh, No wonder I like her so much. And uh, she loves to see her clients have breakthroughs and aha moments. And, uh, Jim, you and I can sure relate to that because that's important to us as well. Lisa is a strategize a plan and then implement the plan type of gal. So it's not enough to just have a good plan. And I can tell you from being her client uh, that uh, she's, man, she's tough. She she uh, has you do homework and she has you actually do stuff. It's not just uh, it's not just head work. Uh, it actually has to do with taking action. Lisa is the person that you go to when you're working to achieve your next goal, but you feel like if you add one more thing to your schedule, the whole thing's going to fall through the floor. And um, uh, she's your go-to when your business grows, but your organizational systems haven't. Uh, which means if if you have too much to do and not enough people to do it with, she's the one that can ask you the tough questions and assist you in really living the life, claiming the life that you deserve to have. Lisa has two great books available on Amazon.com. She's the author of a great book called Your Time, Your Life, Increase Productivity, Manage Your Time, and Give Yourself a Break. Great title, great book. Uh, it is part of my electronic library. It has been for a while now, and folks, you need to get that book. You can also get 30 Days to Success, an awe-inspired journal. Uh, and Lisa's making a very valuable offer to all of you listening to the show tonight. So uh, don't go over and purchase that one quite yet because uh, she's got something special for you. You can access Lisa's website at Strategy Savvy Consulting. That's strategy savvy s a v v y consulting dot com, and we'll be telling you more about what you can find there just a little bit later in the show. Well, I think you can tell that we're in for a fun, fascinating evening. So sit down, buckle up, and hold on, folks, because here we go. Lisa, welcome to Chalk Talk. Thank you for the kind intro, Hugh. I am thrilled to be here with you this evening. I read that just exactly the way you wrote it. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, now I have to ask you, you've become a very successful business person in your own right. You've written a couple of books. Uh, you're you're well known out there in the business community. Where did you come from? What was your background before you started your very own company and started being a genius? Yeah. Before I started System Savvy Consulting, I was actually in high school education. So I started as a high school uh, math teacher and then a softball coach and an athletic director. So I was in administration for a while, and I also ran a team of very – motivated women in the direct selling industry. And I did all of that kind of at the same time. <laughs> and then wow. I, yeah, yeah. And then I realized that I was running through my life, checking off a whole bunch of boxes and a whole bunch of tasks without actually realizing where it was I wanted to go. And so I am so thankful for all the pieces that have led me up until this point because they've all made me the person that I am and I've learned so much along the way. And I would not be as effective as a time strategy visionary now if I didn't have all of that beforehand. So it's always, I think the path has led me to where I am. I love the story about the guy who ran out of the house, jumped on his horse and rode off in four directions at once. Uh, he just went all to pieces. 
<laughs> and it sounds like that's what you were doing there for a little bit. <laughs> it it was. I you're absolutely right. Um I I just kept I had that to do list and I knew that I was great at time management because I could keep checking off the boxes. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really have a plan where it was I was going at the end. But I was getting there off the fast. <laughs> wow. Well, you t- you referred to yourself as a uh, time strategy visionary. I mean, what exactly is a uh, time strategy visionary? What are you seeing in your vision? Great question, Emma. And it's not so much what I see in my vision as what my clients see in theirs. So I'm a huge believer in starting with the end in mind. So I will talk with my clients and ask them, what is your ideal life? What is it that you really want? And then back that up with, okay, where are we right now? (laughs) And how are we going to get there? So we start with the vision first and then back it up with the strategies and the time management techniques that we want to use to get to where that vision becomes reality. Well, let me ask a follow-up on that. How many people actually know what their ideal life or what their their vision, what the end looks like? It depends. I can tell you some come right in and they can say very clearly to me, this is what I want. I'm at this stage in my life and I know that I want this. Others say, I don't know what I want. I just know it's not what I have right now. Mm-hmm. And then either way, we I keep asking more and more and more questions, and so we can start to narrow that down. Well, you uh, you went through the process of starting uh, your own business, uh, System Savvy Consulting, and um, we have a lot of listeners who are just starting businesses or are already running their own businesses like uh, like I am and have been for a while. And uh, I know what uh, I know what challenges and and problems I've had as my business has developed along the the way. What were some of the challenges that you faced when you started your business, and how did you deal with some of those? I think my biggest challenge was that I didn't know what I didn't know. So I had worked in a traditional work setting, and then I decided I was going to own my own business. And so the first thing I thought was, well, as soon as I put up my website, uh, the clients will come. Because I just figured, you know, feel the dreams, build it, and they will come. (laughs) So that was one of the initial challenges. And then just the idea of I would start down a path and then not know all the pieces I had to go with that. So I reached out when you asked, you know, what did you do? I hired a coach who was in a similar field of mine to guide me along, you know, do I need to, what do I need on the end of a legal end? You know, do I need contracts? Like those types of technical pieces or logistical pieces. And then I also reached out with someone to help me with how do I get my, what's in my head out there to people so that they, so I can serve them. You know, you just uh, you just touched on something that I think is is so important that I want to just uh, uh, say it again and really really emphasize this. You said that uh, you said that you uh, started you hired a coach who was in the same field that you are, and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that that uh, coaches in various areas make is that business coaches don't go out and hire their own business coaches or sales coaches don't go out and hire their own sales coaches. And um, that's that's a lesson that I've learned. Um, And and I just just last year spent a a considerable amount of time and money working with a sales coach, Uh, even though I are one and I've been selling for over 40 years. Um, And I... um, it's not so much that I got a whole lot of new information from her, but she she reminded me of some things that I needed to do that I wasn't doing. And uh and so it was just a great exercise getting that input from from somebody else who does exactly what I do really. Um but but just having her go through and coach me 
And so, uh, and I, I also want you to know that um, uh, fortunately, I know uh, what Jim doesn't know, and it's a really long <laughs> list. But, but we're, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to take care of that one item at a time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jim, I got in the first lick today, brother. Yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna have to catch up. <laughs> yes, I'll be I'll be, uh, I'll be sitting here thinking now. Smoke's coming out of my ears. <laughs> uh, I've, I've got a two-part question, but before I ask, or the second part, I want to ask the first part. Is there a particular field or uh, type of business that you focus on with your um, with your system here? I find that I am most effective with clients who are home-based business owners or small business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, but all of those have the number one characteristic of being motivated <laughs> results. That's okay. my, those are the ones that jazz me and that I feel I can most assist. Okay, so, so we're talking about mostly, you know, small businesses, solopreneurs, you know, people getting going. So what is the uh, number one challenge that those people seem to face? I think two really big challenges. One is the idea that it's okay that they're so busy. So, like, I, they will say to me, I know I'm busy now, but I'll be able to slow down when. And then that when never really gets here because they keep changing the bar. Like, I'll be able to slow down when my, when my business gets off the ground. And the idea of what off the ground keeps changing or when I feel successful. And that, yeah. just, that changes. And then that second piece is that they're so busy, they're losing out on their big vision. And so they're thinking, you know, this business is my baby. I have to hold on to every piece of it because no one can do it as great as I can. Yet, they, when they're holding on to every single piece of it, there's only so big they can get, and they're missing out on the rest of their life. Well, how do you deal with that part that no one can do it like I can? Because virtually every business person I know thinks that way as well, especially small business people. Mm-hmm. And I, you know what I tell them is that they're right. No one can do it as good as you can. <laughs> and, then, and then I hang up the phone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then I say, hey, we're done. <laughs> But I, we talk about um, what's the bigger what's the bigger picture. Are there things that you can let go of, and can you put in some quality control measures in such a way that someone can do the job and hit your expectations? Maybe not do it exactly the way that you did, but still do it in a way that you're satisfied and you can move on and do something else. Because if you're holding on to every piece, there's only so much of you. Eventually, you run out of time and energy. Amen. Well, yeah, I have a couple of observations, and uh, one is that that uh, big businesses are just uh, are just small businesses that um, have more people involved, and uh, uh, you know I, I don't see a whole lot of difference really uh, between big businesses and small businesses, uh, except maybe that big businesses have a, a tougher time slowing down and changing direction than small businesses do. If I if I wake up in the morning cuz I'm a small business owner and I decide I want something to be different, I can just say, "Okay, I'm going to do it differently today. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do this now." Uh with big businesses it's, it's it is a little tougher because uh there's there's a board of directors or there's a management team and there are a whole lot of people involved in decisions. Um the other thing, Lisa, you've you've quit preaching and gone to meddling, and uh, I, you know, I guess I don't mind being a bad example, but you just uh, you just told people all about exactly <laughs> what, what my challenges are. <laughs> Saying, well, I'm going to slow down when. <laughs> I wasn't going to call you out on that, Hugh. <laughs> I know I you said weren't. My <laughs> but you know we're hey, we working on it. About. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jim. <laughs> you, you knew, didn't you? <laughs> You've known me for quite a while. So, 
but you know what, folks? Here's the good news, that that with Lisa's coaching, you can make a change. If you know, if you're if you're stuck in that um sort of vicious cycle where, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow down when I get this project done and that project gets finished and all of a sudden there's an even bigger one on the horizon and so you never you never get to slow down because you're always thinking and creating new things that keep you busier and busier. Or if you're in a situation where you really know that you need to hire some people and you need to let go of some of the things that that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing, but you just can't seem to do that because, after all, it's it's your business and you want it done the very best way possible and you know how to do it. If you're stuck uh, in in that cycle like I was, Lisa is the person who can help you get out of that. And uh, it's it's just just a matter of um, doing some thinking and changing your mindset just a little bit, and and she can help you move out of that into a just a completely different uh, reality. And I have to tell you that my experience has been that 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 is so refreshing and it's so gratifying, and it, it there's you just feel such freedom. When you break out of that cycle and and start to do some of the things that Lisa can teach you how to do, so um, uh, so Lisa, I don't mind being the bad example. Uh, it's perfectly okay. <laughs> so so and I do have I another was question. Brag. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're brag about your progress because you've been doing there, so there. great. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I have another question, and that is. Um, you use awe, A W E, to assist your clients in overcoming these challenges that we're talking about. Uh, you know, in one of the Gulf Wars, they, the 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 term shock and awe uh, came into to vogue, and I don't think that's the kind of awe that you're talking about here. Tell us about awe and how it works. Yeah, that's not that kind of awe, <laughs> and had not made that connection till now. So thank you, Hugh. Um, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> when I use the acronym uh, A stands for awareness, W is for work, and E is for evaluation. So it's just a way to help us think through a process. I, from my experience in high school education and, and now working um, strictly in the time management and coaching arena, I found that people do better with a little bit of structure. Some of us like a lot of structure, and some of us just want a tiny bit. But awe is a way to give us that structure so that we can think about awareness, where are we, <laughs> and where do we want to be, work, how can we bridge the gap between where we are and where we want to be effectively. And then E for evaluation, what worked, what didn't, what can we do better next time. Great. And at the, at the bottom of the hour, we're actually going to have Jim uh, take you through each one of those elements and have you talk a little bit about them. So uh, that will be coming up here very shortly. Great. Very good. Well, I've got to ask, you know, you're talking about being so busy and you're, you're, you're running crazy and emails and phones. You know, what are some of the things that you have your clients stop doing that they, they should not be doing but they think are important? You – <laughs> That's a great question, and um, you named some of them right away, emails and phone calls. and So I try not to tell anyone to stop doing anything, but through conversation, a lot of times people will come right out and say, wait a minute, I don't need to do that myself. And one of the things I um, think about, I talked, had a conversation with someone yesterday who was talking about how it's very important for her to blog five times a week, but she knows that the amount of time it would take for her to do all the writing and create the graphics and do the formatting and edit and all of that would take a really big chunk of her day, and that's not how she wants to necessarily spend it. So what she does is she writes and then sends it to someone to edit and sends it to someone else to source the pictures and someone else formats it and gets it up. So her time is minimal and the outcome is huge. So it's those types, there's some of that. Sometimes there's special projects that people are doing that they're investing a lot of time learning how to do something that's really not um, something that they ever want to do again, and they could possibly then not do that. 
my rule of thumb is usually um, people, not paper. So if you can outsource admin stuff and you stay with people, that usually I find works well for um, business owners. Well, Jim has done all kinds of things that he doesn't want to do again, but we're not going to really go there uh, this morning. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> and and uh, I, I have a, I have an example uh, from from the work that Lisa has done with with me. Uh, I was spending a, a a pretty fair amount of time um, doing messaging and sending connection requests on LinkedIn because I use LinkedIn a lot in. Uh, in my business to uh, to develop leads and make contact with potential customers and clients and and um, so I was doing all of that myself and Lisa asked me a really important question she said what are what, you just think about she said in fact this was my homework for a week think about the things that you're doing right now that you really shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be spending your time on and that was one of the things that that came out of that. And so I was talking with uh, with my wife Priscilla, and I said, Priscilla, you know, I I really need to hire a um, an assistant to to help me with this social media stuff. And she said, uh, Well, would it just be would it just be uh, uh, working on the computer? This person wouldn't have to talk to anybody. And I said, Yeah. And she said, Well, I'll do that. And you can just pay me what you'd pay somebody else. And I said, sold American. So Priscilla has been doing all of my my social media stuff. And wow. man, what what a load that has been off of me. And she's great at it. I mean, she just does an awesome job. She tracks everything. She she takes care of everything. And um, uh, it's it's just been such a blessing in my business and in my life. And it's it's even in, even in my marriage, it's something that we're doing together now. It's a project that we have uh, together, and we're both working on the business, and we're both really enjoying it. And so, um, uh, and, and that's due to Lisa's coaching. That would not have happened without me um, uh, working with Lisa. So that's just an example of the, the kinds of breakthroughs and the kinds of ideas and strategies that that come up and it wasn't so much that Lisa said you know what you need to talk to your wife and see if she will do this for you Lisa just said think about what you shouldn't shouldn't be doing you know the the things that that you're doing right now that really you know you could have somebody else do just think about that and that just came out of of that thinking and that strategy and you know a lot of times things work that way that that ideas um uh, become things they they become action they th- those ideas um or questions uh, that that ideas spring from just change everything and and lisa is kind of a catalyst for that she she helps strategize and get those ideas out there so folks we're going to be right back with Tonight's special guest, Lisa Malice, and we're going to talk more about how you can become more productive in less time. And we want to urge you to visit Lisa's website at systemsavvyconsulting.com, and you will find tons of valuable stuff there. You can learn a whole bunch of great things from Lisa's blogs. And she's she's got uh, those blogs right there on her on her website uh, and won't cost you a dime, and it could be worth a gazillion dollars to you just to read those things and learn from them and put them into action in your own business. And uh, she's also got a very special offer on her site for an audio program that's called Eliminate Distractions and Focus on What Matters in Three Easy Steps. Eliminate Distractions. Hmm. Jim, I might have to fire you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. I'll tell you what, folks. Jim is one of my most uh, valuable assets, one of my best friends, and the co-host with the most. Jim's not going anywhere. But uh, really, you can eliminate distractions and focus on the things that matter. And when we focus on the things that matter, man, that's what really moves our businesses forward. And you can have that 
audio program absolutely free. All you have to do is go on the website, put in your first name and your email address, and uh, click a little link on, on your email, and you, you get that audio program for your very own. And, uh, uh, it, you know, how can it get any better than that? Well, guess what? Actually, it can get a little bit better than that because you can find out how to take advantage of Lisa's coaching. She can work with you one-to-one and analyze where you are now and what you need to do to move from where you are to where you really want to be, and she'll help you find the answers to two of the most important questions uh, in, in business time management, questions that you need to ask yourself. Um, and, and those questions are, what tasks should I really be doing? And what should I not be doing? And if you answer those two questions, you are well on your way uh, if, you'll, if you'll take the answers to them and take action and do something about them in your business. You're well on your way to success uh, in, in managing your time and your business. Um, and Lisa will do an I'm ready to work less and achieve more strategy session with you and it's complimentary, it's, uh, which means, uh, Jim, it's pro bono. Uh, Lisa, we've, <laughs> we've taught Jim to speak Italian, and uh, right. he figured out that pro bono doesn't have anything to do with Sonny and Cher. Uh, right. it, it actually means Maybe it's free. <laughs> and so Lisa will have a conversation with you and find out what's going on with you, and you guys can figure out together um, how you want to deal with that. And all you have to do is go to schedulewithlisa.com and arrange a time to have that session with her. Now, I mentioned at the top of the show that there's this wonderful book called 30 Days to Success, and it is an awe-inspired journal. And it's a tool that you can use to create change using a concrete strategy. It's a place to record your progress, jot down your ideas and thoughts, and celebrate your success. Now, if you just go to if you just go to Amazon and buy the book, it's going to you're going to invest about 30 bucks to buy the book and it's well worth it to do that. I mean, think about it. 30 bucks, shoot, I spend more than that when I go out to dinner. And and so it's it's really just uh, not a whole lot to invest for a tremendous tool that will move your business forward. But that's not all. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not all. Here's what else you get if you if you purchase that journal. You get the uh, the 30 day awe challenge, and those are daily videos and action steps delivered to your inbox for 30 days. Videos from Lisa that take you through the different things that you can do to become a more successful manager of your your time and tasks. And it also includes the 30-minute strategy session with Lisa. All of that, folks, for $29 investment. Wow. You yes. just can't beat that. And so go to her, go to, uh, to systemsavvyconsulting.com, and it's a slash 30 days to success, and you have to put dashes between the 30 and days and two and success in order to get to the right place. But if you do that, you can have all of that for an investment of just $29. And uh, let me tell you, folks, it is worth way, way, way more than that, 10, 15, 20, 100 times more than that. Well, if you're looking for a dynamic speaker for your next corporate or association event, uh, you can contact Lisa and talk with her about speaking for you. And she'll entertain, inform, and motivate your members or employees to manage their time well, be more productive, and more fulfilled in their work. Or even better yet, arrange for her to come and do a workshop for your company. I just imagine if your management team or your sales team were all working on exactly the things that they needed to do, and they got the most important tasks done each and every day. Wow, sounds like corporate heaven to me. And that's what Lisa can do for you. So check out Lisa's website tonight and take advantage of all the good stuff that's there. Well, we've got just a couple of things going on at Red Cap Sales Coaching that can help you massively increase your sales and your income without busting your budget. So I'm going to have my good buddy Jim Hamlin take over and tell you all about that. 
Well, I'll try not to to be distracted, but folks, we are very <laughs> excited because uh, we're too late. <laughs> <laughs> I stay distracted. But uh, a couple of years ago, she wrote a book. It's a fantastic book called Take the Icky and Scary Out of Sales. The reason we're so excited is we're coming out, Red Cap and she are coming out with a brand new edition of this book, and it's due out shortly, and we're getting very, very close to the launch of this new edition. It will contain a brand new chapter, new scripts, super sales tips and ideas, in addition to all the great information that was in it to begin with. Folks, reading this book and applying it will enable you to have a sales conversation with anyone with no fear and total confidence and make a whole lot of sales, which means a ton of money. This book is for the seasoned veteran as well as the beginner. And right now, she is accepting pre-orders and is giving a discount. That's what I said, a discount off the cover price. When the book is released, it will be $25, and you can get a signed copy for only $20 if you order now. And to pre-order the new edition, just email Hugh at Hugh at RedCapSalesCoaching.com and put book in the subject line. You'll get an ordering information in a return email, and you'll receive a signed copy of the new edition hot off the presses. Uh, Jim, let me just sweeten the pot just a little bit. Okay. And uh, that yeah. is, if anybody pre-orders the book right now, and it's going to be a, a few weeks probably before it it actually launches, before it's actually released, um, had planned to have it released tomorrow, and uh, we had to we had to push the schedule up just because of marketing considerations. But anybody who pre-orders the book now uh, will get a, a PDF copy of the book electronically of the whole book. Uh, right when they wait, they place the order and, and make the investment of twenty dollars, and then they'll get the signed copy of the actual book when it uh, when it's released. So, uh, if wow. you'd like to have the if you'd ha- like to have the electronic version now and the the actual book when it comes out, uh, just go ahead and email me at hugh at redcapsalescoaching dot com. Just put book in the subject line. And I'll send you the ordering information and um, get the PDF copy uh, out to you right away. Wow. Uh, An early opportunity to start improving and increasing your sales and sales skills. Thanks, Hugh. That's a great offer. Got another thing I'd still like to uh, share with you all. You can still have a free 45-minute consultation with one of our Red Cap sales coaches. Folks, it's free for now. It's not going to last long. All you need to do is take a take five minutes of your time and complete a brief online sales survey. After you take the sales survey, the sales coach will talk with you about your business, about your sales, give you some sales advice that you can put into practice in your business right away. Increase your sales and your income, and it won't cost you a dime. Just take the five-minute survey, get a 45-minute consultation, and in order to do it, go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash free sales survey and capitalize the S in free, the S in sales, and the S in survey. Do that right after the show tonight. Answer the 12 questions, and we'll contact you to arrange your free time with one of our Red Set Cap sales coaches. Folks, what a bunch of great offers from Lisa's to Hughes to go into Red Cap Sales Coaching. Take advantage of all those right now. Hugh, back to you. All right, Jim, thank you. And uh, we're back with our guest, time strategy visionary Lisa Malice. And uh, Lisa, uh, we want to talk some about the about the awe process. And uh, here in a minute, Jim is going to going to just take you through some of your favorite strategies for for using that uh, that technique or that that awe tool. 
Uh, could you just work through uh, the awe process with us on a uh, on, on a particular subject? Like, let, let's just say delegation, because we've already mentioned that's one of the hard things for small business people to do. What would the awe process be like in in working through this process of delegating? I would love to, and I I may use you as a um, example of someone who's done it well along the way. If that's all right. Sure. All right, good, good. So the first part was A for awe. Like you referenced earlier, ask yourself, you know, is this something I should be doing? And really I have four questions when we're talking about delegating in the awe process. So the first one would be just after you list a lot of the things that you're doing throughout, a lot of tasks that you're doing throughout the day, throughout the week, Ask yourself, is this in line with my goals? And a lot of times we can find out that just that one question knocks it right off the list. Maybe the task that you're doing doesn't even relate to the vision of where you want to be any longer. And then to go back to what you were saying, Hugh, um, is my time best spent doing this? Am I the only one that could do this? That's where you started to look at, wait a minute, maybe I don't have to do everything on social media. And then that fourth question that I just started adding recently after listening to a workshop was, why am I doing this? And a lot of times that really helps us focus in on (laughs) why are you holding on so tight? How can you let go? And the one thing that's popping into my head now that I can think of for you, Hugh, was this question is, what you shared with me last week about you just let go of a big piece of a big project that you're doing where it would have taken you hours and hours and hours and you went ahead and delegated that out because you were able to let go. Why am I doing it? Well, I don't have to. So that's our A piece. Then when we talk through the W piece of all with delegating, that's the work part. That's the strategy part. That's the structure. So we look at what are some possible tasks and resources um, that I could delegate to. Maybe you don't know yet what you're willing to let go of, but let's start creating a list of people that you could give to. So it works with you when you talk with Priscilla. You know, I'm going to need to hire someone. She's like, hey, here I am. (laughs) So look at me. (laughs) And then there's also um, on the work end, I also have my clients think about, how do I want to do this so that I feel comfortable? Like what are some of the points that I want to make sure my people, if I delegate to them, I want to make sure that they hit it. And if I let this go, how am I going to be able to do that? And think through that stuff ahead of time and build that into your structure. And then finally, I when the work when we talk about the work phase, I always like for people to think about um or we talk about Robert um, Mavic has six levels of delegating, and it goes from one uh, one level being, I'm going to give you this, and I want you to, before you take your first step, come back and tell me, all the way to, I'm going to give you this, go handle it, do it, you don't have to come back and tell me anything. And it's important to know where you're at on that scale and where someone else is on the other end. And then for the E phase of evaluation, what's working, what's not? Let's make sure when we delegate something out that we look at, okay, was it easy for me to do? Was it hard for me to do? What did I learn from the process? What did the person I delegate to learn? If I do this again, what do I want to do differently? What can I keep the same? And then that's how we work through that all process when it comes to delegating awareness around what tasks do you have that you could delegate out, and then work on creating a structure that you can feel comfortable with when you delegate it, and then evaluation, let's check back and make sure that it's working. Wow. Well, there's got to be a lot more for these small business people to, to work on and fix rather than just delegation. So talking about this this awe strategy, let's let's go back to the awareness phase. What what is your favorite strategy for the awareness phase? I like to have people set a timer 
because <laughs> uh, if you say, even if we talk delegating, um, just for another second, if we say, okay, what are some of the tasks you do all day that you could delegate, you will write down a couple and you're doing them from memory, so you won't necessarily remember them all, Jim. And so if you can set a timer and then say, oh, what am I doing right now, then you can jot that down. I feel that when we're in the moment, we gather much more data and much more that, that represents what we're actually doing than when we try to think back over the course of the day. So whether we're talking delegating or you're talking distractions, because that's a huge thing that um, people face. You know, if I say, okay, what are your biggest distractions, you're going to tell me email. Well, if you set a timer throughout the day and say, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing right now and how did I get here, you'll be able to think through, oh, wait a minute, I was distracted by that shiny object right outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you may be talking about me and shiny objects. But uh, does this timer go off every five minutes, every 30 minutes? How often do you set this timer for? I like to tell my clients to set it for random intervals so that they oh. still hear it. Because you know how all of a sudden you see things or do things at the same time and, and you no longer see them any longer? Mm -hmm. And so if you can change it, I also tell them uh, make it loud and set it across the room. Because if it's sitting oh. right next to you, if you set it on your computer, you'll just hit stop or snooze or whatever. But if you have to get up to get it, it forces your attention back to the time at hand. That is funny. I do that with my alarm clock, even though I don't have <laughs> trouble getting up. I set it across the room, so I have to get up to turn it off. <laughs> right. Right. And so same same philosophy. Mine is set uh, for every hour on the hour uh, because that's when I get to look at email because yeah. uh, Lisa told me that it wasn't really a good idea for me to look at it constantly. <laughs> that whole continually refreshing tends to drop our productivity a bit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, well, let's move on to the uh, the second part. And that what you, you talk about your awareness phase, what about the the work phase? What's your favorite strategy there? I'm a big fan of structure. And I know I, I spoke about this a little bit earlier. Not everyone needs the same amount of structure, but I feel like um, we all need some of it. Back when I was in high school education and working with a lot of students, a lot of my students were um, had ADHD. And many of them who had not been diagnosed had many of the symptoms of people with ADHD. In it. And one of the pieces that helps us is structure. And I find that busy business owners, will exhibit symptoms of ADHD, whether they have it or not. And the idea of giving them something to hold on to and some sort of a structure really helps. So if we talk, if we even jump back to delegating for a second and we talk about that, one of the structures I like with delegating is just a delegation log, a place to write down, this is what I delegated, this is when they're checking back in with me, this is when I'm checking back in with them, it helps so things don't fall through the cracks, but it also helps so that you're not micromanaging. Hmm. I mean, the business is your baby, but if you delegate out a task and then you watch over their shoulder, you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and they're getting a little cranky with you. <laughs> and so if you can give yourself some structure with that, then you're able to say, okay, I'm going to be able to let go for this amount of time, and then I have a scheduled check-in. Are, are you able to take these strategies that with a small business, and let's say it, it's it's five employees or three employees, and and go throughout the organization with with this? You know, you know what you're talking about structure. Every one of us are giving things up and trying to move things, and we don't probably do a very good job of following back up to make sure they've been done anywhere in the organization. I find that uh, the follow up or the thing falling through the cracks is one of the biggest uh, challenges. And so yeah. I like to start with um, the the person who's making the changes first. So I don't want to say necessarily start, you know, with the manager or the person at the top of the structure, but the person who's most invested in making the changes first and then work out from there. Because if, it, if it's one of those, um, and you, you know this from working um, 
with people, if someone tells you you have to do it, you so don't want to do it. <laughs> but right. If someone says, look what I'm doing and it's working, then people start to jump on board. So I'd rather work that way, like more of a grassroots. It could be a CEO uh, working with a, a management team, or it could be a sales manager working with salespeople, or it could be um, a, a, an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, just taking care of their own situation. It could apply across the board, couldn't it? Yes, it could. Absolutely. That's that's important. I like that. Well, now we're thinking about having the end in mind, and you're going for the evaluation phase. Uh, what is your favorite strategy there? How do we get it? Just schedule it. Yep, my favorite strategy for the my favorite strategy for the evaluation phase is to schedule it. How often do you schedule in time to think? So where the all process can fall short is that E phase. Because we thought about what we wanted to do, the show we for went and did it, and then we hurry up and jump into the next thing we want to think about and do. Where if we mm-hmm. schedule an evaluation, then I think the genius is in the debrief. I think we learn so much more after we're done. And so schedule it. So I like to uh, encourage clients to schedule time in uh, at least once a week for and or at the end of a big project. Um, Personally, I schedule Friday afternoon. How does my week go? What have I learned from it? And what am I going to take from what I've learned this week to make my next week better? But if we don't schedule it, we fly, usually we fly right through it. Very true. You know, I've used the I've used that evaluation in working with salespeople a whole lot. And uh at the end of every sales call that, that I've gone on with um uh, uh people that I've managed, uh we've we've answered uh two questions at the at the end of the sales call. And the first question was, um, what did we do well? And the second question was always, what could we do differently next time that would make it even better? And so we always tried to keep it uh, on a positive plane. It was not it wasn't even uh, what could I do better or, you know, what did I do wrong or what mistakes did I make or that sort of thing. It was always what could could we do differently next time that would make it even better. And and uh that that replaying of a sales call it's kind of the it's it's kind of the same thing with uh professional golfers you know, replaying all of the shots that they shot and figure out what they did, what they did right, and um, what they did really well, and then how could they how could they set that shot up differently next time to have a better result? So um, uh, I've I've found great value in that, and it seems like that applies across the board in a very general sense to everything business wise. Right, in personal, I, you know, I always think like when we go on vacation, could I have packed, you know, what else could I have packed or not packed? Or, you know, on the lead up to it, what could we have done? Um, the evaluation, I really think that's where a big piece of the learning comes in. Vacation? What is this thing you call vacation? <laughs> yeah, we need to talk after the call. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I jest, but I'm afraid that there are some business owners who would ask that question uh, with all seriousness and gravity. Vacation? I know. You know what does that mm-hmm. mean? And uh, and that is that's one of the main thrusts of the teaching that you do and the coaching that you do, Lisa. Is is that there's more to life? I can remember my sister telling me once years ago when I was a real workaholic. Uh, you know, when you're on your deathbed, you're not going to say, I wish I had spent more time at the office. Right. And uh, she was exactly right about that. There's more to life. I mean, work is an important part of it, and business is an important part of life. Uh, but it's it's not 
what life is made up of, and really, in in my value system at least, it's not even the most important thing. And so, and so that's part of what you teach people is that you can you can accomplish more in your business with less time, so that you have more time to do the things that are really important, and maybe even spend some time vacationing. And I I think that's tremendously valuable, Lisa. Thank you. Well, you know, you've you've talked about a number of different things. If um if if somebody is just sort of starting into this to this process of of maybe even just starting to think about it, maybe the things we've talked about tonight have uh, have sort of jogged some things for some folks. Where do, where does somebody start? What's the what's the first thing? What's the one thing that they could do to really get started in this process of uh, of awe? Great question, and thank you for asking that. I'm a big believer in we need to have a, a one first next step. Lots of great information, <laughs> one first next step, and that step right now would be to schedule time to sit down and have a serious heart-to-heart with yourself and just ask yourself, are you living your best life? Not are you happy with your life, not have you reached some of your goals, but are you living your best life right now? Well, I want you to know that I want you to know that I do have conversations with myself and I I ask Mm -hmm. myself questions and and um, I, I let myself answer, and there are times when I worry because when I hear the answer, I say, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Look, you don't worry. I say, huh, every time you give an answer, so that's just... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure that that has to do with the quality of my answers. <laughs> oh, all right. So you're, you're getting stuck in the middle of this. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking for those of you listening at home, if you're in the boat that he's in, feel free to call friends and talk it through. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly right. Well, you just asked a, a very, very good question, and I'm going to kind of do a follow-up, and it's uh, you know, a question that we ask all of our listeners. And, by the way, this has been fantastic. But if you could give our listeners, of all the things we talk about, one piece of advice that you consider to be most important. I mean, you just said scheduling was, was extremely important. What else would there be to, uh, to gain more success in business and sales and have a better life? I think it's the idea that life is a journey, not a destination. And so celebrate your success along the way. If you're always focused on the outcome, you miss all the stuff that's happening along with you every day. Awesome answer. Thank you. It is. That's very good. Well, folks, uh, here at Red Cap, like Lisa Malice, we believe in taking action. And so we want to just encourage you and urge you to check out Lisa's website at um, System Savvy. Is it Solutions? Consulting. <laughs> System Savvy Consulting. Consulting. That's System Savvy Consulting. Dot com and read Lisa's great blogs tonight after we after we get off the air go on and take a look at some of those blogs and learn some great stuff uh, do it right before you go to sleep so you can let your subconscious think about those things while you're sleeping get your 30 days to success journal your subscription and your strategy session for just $29 and you can do that right on Lisa's website. Arrange for Lisa to to do a talk or a workshop for your company or association and let her let her uh, just educate your your folks about how to be more productive with their time. You'll be really glad you did that. Take massive action. Do it now and you will be really really glad that you did. 
Well, Lisa, we sure do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to come and talk with us and share all of these good things with us and, and with our listeners. And, uh, again, I just want to say that I have gained so much from the coaching that you've done with me, and it's made a tremendous difference in my my business and my life already, and I know that there are other changes that I'll be making as a result of working with you uh, that will um, uh, make make even more important changes as things go along. And so just really appreciate you and appreciate the um, – uh, the help that you've given me, and again, we appreciate you being on the show and uh, sharing all of these things with uh, with our audience. You are most welcome, and I appreciate the opportunity to share my passion with your viewers, and I'm excited about the focus action that you've been taking, because um, change doesn't happen without action, and you've been taking a lot of action, and that really jazzes me every time we work together with you. Well, you know, you need to work with with Hamlin because uh, I'll tell you what, um, you know that everybody everybody just wants something in their business that that is a real challenge, that's that's out of the ordinary, and uh, you know that could be that could be the big project of your life, <laughs> working with Hamlin. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, Jim Hamlin is one of the the smartest, most wonderful business people I know, and I'm so uh, I'm so really fortunate to to have him as as part of the Red Cap organization and as my co-host and as my friend. And I tease Jim a lot, and Jim didn't get anywhere near as many licks in on me as he usually does, um, but. I'm sure he'll make up for that next week, folks, so stay tuned. So, Lisa, thank you so much. Have a, a, a Make it a fun, productive rest of your week. I'll be talking with you on Wednesday and uh, looking forward to that. And um, uh, we'll be talking with you again on Chalk Talk one of these days pretty soon, too. Sounds great, babe. All Bye. right. Thank you so much. Well, Jim, that about wraps it up for Sales Chalk Talk today. And uh, Jim and I will be back next Tuesday and every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Next week, we're going to have branding expert David Tyerman with us. And uh, David is somebody who built a multi-million dollar company teaching other companies how to brand themselves. And it's going to be an awesome show, so we hope you'll join us. Uh, Jim, any uh, uh, words of wisdom or smart remarks or anything else you'd like to say before we <laughs> sign off today? No, I'm just very, very thankful to Lisa that, that she's been helping you improve. And uh, it's it definitely <laughs> and uh, just, just my life easier. <laughs> Well, listen, folks, make it a fun, profitable week. Jim, good night to you, and good night, everybody, and good selling. Good night, y'all. Sergeant Patrick's on.